In 1789, John Wesley gave us the principles of money. Earn as much as you can, save as much as you can, and give as much as you can. These principles bring prosperity, protection, and peace of mind, and assure financial success. We're making this valuable resource available without cost or obligation. To get your biblical rules of money and enjoy the blessings and rewards of financial stewardship, call 800-723-8349. That's 800-723-8349. Welcome to Words of Wisdom for today. I'm Dr. Earl Lund, and today I want to talk about who's Satan. I think we need to understand who Satan is so we can understand who our enemy is. If you don't understand your enemy, how can you win the battle? How can you succeed? How can you get to where you're supposed to go? So let me just pray. So Heavenly Father, I just praise you and thank you for giving us your son. Jesus, I just thank you and praise you for dying on the cross so that we can have our sins paid for so we can get to heaven. Holy Spirit, I just thank you and praise you that you're living inside of us if we've accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior so that you can guide us, you can lead us, you can teach us, you can comfort us, you can do so many things for us. So I just thank you all praise you for all that you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. So I, I want to kind of start at a place where it kind of seems like it doesn't make sense because the name of Satan's not here. But let's start in Genesis 3 because that's where everything falls apart for this world. And it just says here, now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to Satan, that's her first mistake. Why are you talking? Or I should say, said to the serpent, I should say, second to the serpent, don't talk to the serpent, don't talk to the enemy, don't do that, okay? We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, Okay, and then it just continues from there, and it's like it all goes downhill, and now we get to deal with the sin that took place. But who's the serpent? See, who's the serpent? And it says here in verse 14, so the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, you shall eat dust all the days of your life, and I will put enmity, division, conflict between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. That seed is capitalized. When it's capitalized, it's talking about the seed. Jesus is coming through the woman. Jesus, the seed is coming through. Jesus is coming. And it says, he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Okay, so let's go. Because you know what? You need to understand something. What's the best way to try to understand? Because first of all, a serpent, they don't talk today. I mean, if we see snakes, if we see anything, those animals aren't talking. Here's God talking to the serpent. So let's just go to Revelation 12, okay? Let's go to Revelation 12, and it says here in Revelation 12, in verse seven, and war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out. That serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world, he has cast to the earth 
and his angels were cast out with him. Okay, I'm going to continue, but I want to just come back for a second. So when you use the Bible to interpret the Bible, that's going to be the best possible way you're going to have understanding. So here it is, the beginning of the Bible, the end of the Bible, and all of a sudden we get a clue. We get a clue here. So Satan is called the great dragon. It, he was cast out of heaven by Michael and the other angels that were with Michael. And uh, he was a serpent of old called the devil and Satan. So now let me continue reading and I want to go to a few other places because we need to take the different passages to put them together to try to now create the picture. Because a lot of times God has he has his ways that he wants you to search. He wants you to search the scriptures. He wants you to understand. He doesn't want you just to take it for face value. He wants you to look to see, to be guided by the Holy Spirit, to understand that he gives you puzzle pieces that need to be put together. Just like when you go down to the store, you buy a thousand piece puzzle. Well, you get a picture now you take each piece, you have to put it together to now recreate the picture so you'll really understand what was there. So let's just continue. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brethren, another name for Satan. who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. Satan is accusing you. He, you know, here's the problem. Satan actually has a lot of ground on us. He's got a lot of stuff on us. I mean, think about it. He is like, he is like a, a, an, a, an attorney who's prosecuting, coming to the father saying, look at what they did. Look at how they sinned. Look at how they fornicated. Look at how they did this. Look at how they did it. Look at how they did this. Look at how they did it. Look at how. You know, the truth is he's right. We deserve hell. We deserve judgment for all the things that we've done. The accuser is trying to get the father to judge us for what we've done. But well, what's the difference? If you've accepted Jesus, he's your Lord and Savior. Now, Jesus is actually sitting at the right hand of the Father. It says that he, he is basically our lawyer. He is, he is the one who is, he's our defense attorney. He is the one who says to the judge, hey, dad, Satan's right, the accuser's right, but I paid for that on the cross. I paid for that with the 39 stripes that I did. I paid for that by my hands, my feet, and my side being pierced. I paid for all of that. So now the father can say, not guilty even though the accuser, Satan, is accusing us. Now, let's keep going. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. Okay, let's see if we can make, so let's add some more to this. So, you know, it would be easy if, if the Bible laid out everything about Satan in one spot. It doesn't work like that. So now let's go to Isaiah 14. Let's go to verse 12 through 21. And it says, 
how you are fallen from heaven. O Lucifer, son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground. You who weaken the nations, for you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Okay, the stars of God are the angels of God. That's a consistent theme that the stars, I mean, it could be literal stars, but usually stars are referring to angels. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Okay, Lucifer. Lucifer is a created angel. He's a seraphim. He is like Michael. He is like Gabriel. He is like Raphael. He is like the seraphim. Okay, we need to understand that cherubim, the ones that we see pictures of, these little cherub faces, these little like angels that are supposed to be signs. Okay, one of those which are not the true archangels. They killed 185,000 Assyrians, which were the most brutal warriors in the world at that time, in one night. One angel. One angel. So, you know, now here's Lucifer saying, I want to be as the Most High. He's created by God, but he wants to be equal to his creator. You shall be brought down to Sheol. Okay, another term would be Hades, to the lowest depths of the pit. Okay, eventually Satan is going to be thrown into the lake of fire. He's going to be thrown into the final eternal judgment, final damnation, the place we would call hell. It says, uh, those who see you will gaze at you and consider you saying, is this the man who made the earth tremble? Who shook kingdoms? Who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities? Who did not open the house of the prisoners? All the kings of the nations, all of them sleep in glory, everyone in his own house, but you are cast out of your grave like an abominable branch. Okay, now there's a correlation here an abominable branch. Jesus is also, the branch is a term used so much for Jesus. So this is an abominable branch instead of a holy branch. Like the garment of those who are slain, thrust through with a sword, who go down to the stones of the pit, like a corpse trodden underfoot, you will not be joined with them in burial because you have destroyed your land and slain your people. The brood of evildoers shall never be named. Prepare slaughter for his children because of inequity of their fathers, lest they rise up and possess the land and fill the face of the world with cities. God hates pride. You read Proverbs, Solomon wrote so much about pride. Pride comes before the fall. Pride, God hates pride because it's, it's Lucifer. It's his pride as he was this, well, let me go into the next verse and we'll understand more, but it's his pride that he wants to be equal to his creator. You need to remember that, okay? Satan was created. Lucifer was created. He is a created being. He wants to give you the illusion he is equal to God. He is equal to the creator. He is not, but he is the great deceiver, the great illusionist. He wants you to believe because if you believe he is equal to God, you have given him the power he's looking for. Now, let's go to Ezekiel 28. <clears throat> And this is verse 11 through 19. It says, it says here, Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, 
take up a lamentation to the king of Tyre. That's kind of weird. We're talking about Satan here, Lucifer, but yet it's the king of Tyre. And say to him, thus says the Lord God, you were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden. Another clue. Wait a second. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Okay. Every precious stone was your covering. So picture this perfect being, it was covered in precious stones. Can you imagine being covered with diamonds, rubies, emeralds, sapphires? I mean, you go on and on with all of these beautiful stones on top of, on, on you. It's like every precious stone was your covering. The sardis, the topaz, and diamond, pearl, onyx, and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. Okay, timbrels and pipes, it's related to music. It's related to, he was created to worship God. He was created, he, many believe, he was the one that was the leader of worship in heaven. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I establish you, you were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. Okay, now wild stuff here, pictures. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till inequity was found in you. He was perfect in every way from the day he was created until inequity. That inequity was pride. I want to be equal to my creator. I don't want to worship him. I don't want to serve him. I don't want to follow him. I want to be worshiped. I don't want to worship him. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within and you sinned. He sinned before he brought sin into the world by deceiving the woman in the garden. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God, and I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. His beauty, his beauty got to him. How many times have you seen people, their pride, their beauty, their, their who they are? It gets them, it destroys them. And Satan is right there because he's the one that first started. So now he wants to do that to each and every person here on this earth. Because remember something. He was a created being. Now God creates man in his image. After Satan was here, the serpent was here. He had already been thrown out of heaven, He'd been here then man is created in the garden. Now, man is created in the image of God. The cherubs, the servant, the angels, we're just gonna say angels, were not created in the image of God. They were created to serve God and to do his purposes. We were created to carry the image of God and to have a relationship with God. The angels are watching, probably going, I don't understand this. These, these people who are sinful, wrong, I mean, doing all kinds of vile things. Okay. Why does God want to have a relationship with them? But that's what God chose. That's what God chose. And you have to understand that we started at the beginning, in the third chapter of Genesis, I went to Revelation in 12, but you need to understand 
you got to continue in Revelation to understand that Jesus is coming back for his church. Jesus is not coming back for his angels. Jesus is coming back for his people who he died for. Jesus didn't die for the angels. He died for us. He died for us so we can make the choice to receive him as our Lord and Savior. He died for us so that we could in turn make the choice because it's always our choice. Remember, God gives us gifts and we can use those gifts however we choose. The guy who's the head of, organ of the different organized crimes and different gangs, he's got a gift. He's got a gift to be an apostle, to gather people, to gather people. But he's not understanding who he was created to be. And so he's turned his ways to evil, to crime, for money, for selfish, for, for purposes. But God gave him the gift to be able to bring people to the kingdom, to gather people, to be able to bring people to the kingdom. But everyone has a gift, whether that's someone who's singing songs that are pulling people away from God or those who are singing people songs that are bringing people to God. We all have gifts. Now, it's your choice how you use the gift, but the other thing is, is no matter what you do, no matter what choice you make, you have to understand that you can't earn your way into heaven by what you do. You can accept Jesus. Now your sins are forgiven because you will never be righteous and you will never be enough to pay for your sins. But you can accept that, have your sins forgiven, so then make the choice out of thankfulness. Thankfulness that I'm not going to be going to hell, that I'm going to be in heaven for eternity, that I'm going to choose to live for eternity. I'm going to choose to not, to understand who Satan is, to understand that I don't want to be destroyed by him because we need to focus on the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, not focus on Satan or the demons, but to focus on where it's supposed to be. But at the same time, we need to understand our enemy. We need to understand the ones who want to destroy us and understand what is going on so that we can be part of the body of Christ. We can be part of the church. We can be part of that bride that he's coming back for. So, let me finish here. It says, for your heart was lifted up because of your beauty, which I talked about. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. Satan does it. Things Satan did, you know, he wants us to replicate what he did. Corrupted our wisdom. You know, It's the lack of wisdom, the lack of wisdom of understanding the word of God, why people perish. They're not understanding what God's what what God says, what God does. They're they're being deceived, they're being misled, they're going into delusion, they're falling away because they don't have the knowledge, they don't have an understanding, and Satan rips them off. Satan is that roaring lion. That roaring lion. How does a roaring lion work? He roars to put fear into the prey. To put fear in because if the herd stays together, the lion won't attack because he can't win. But when all of a sudden the herd is there and now all of a sudden one of the animals becomes fearful. Now he bolts. He bolts. When you bolt out of fear, when you leave God's design, when you leave the body of Christ, when you choose and you all of a sudden go off by yourself, go your own way, isolation, fear, all those things kick in. And all of a sudden, that's the animal that becomes dinner. That's the animal that gets destroyed. That's the animal that gets taken out. 
not by the male who roared, by the females. Okay. I cast you to the ground. Satan was, Satan was cast to this earth. Lucifer was cast to this earth and became Satan, the devil, the accuser. All the different names, right? I laid you before kings that you might gaze at, that they might gaze at you. You defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your inequities, by the inequity of your trading. Ezekiel you know, and Isaiah, they wrote a lot of things that were very difficult to understand. We don't know. What were they trading? What was going on? The fiery stones. There's a lot of things. Here. I don't think anyone truly understands certain concepts, but Ezekiel wrote a lot of very, very prophetic, very wild terms with all kinds of things. So the Holy Spirit knows we need to ask the Holy Spirit. We need to try to just follow, have the Holy Spirit open our eyes to understand as much as we can because the words are here. Ask the Holy Spirit. You know, too many times people who teach the Word of God say, I know what, I have all the answers. Okay. Nobody has all the answers but the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit inspired 40 men to write 66 books that are written over a period of 1,500 years. That is ridiculous. Nothing should make any sense at all because they lived in different times, different places, different backgrounds, different ethnic groups, different everything. They're not talking to one another. There's no way that this should even make sense because they're all coming from their own place, own time, everything. But the Holy Spirit is the one who inspired them and they followed what the Holy Spirit said. And it says, all who knew you among the peoples are astonished at you. You have become a horror and shall be no more forever. Now, now I want to go just to a couple passages. It helps a few things out here. Let's kind of pull a couple things together. So let's go to John 10.10. 10. I mean, we can go through a lot of things, but so John 10.10 10 here. One of my favorite verses. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. That thief is Satan. I have come, that's Jesus, that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So you need to understand Satan has basically one purpose, to steal, kill, and destroy. That's it. He is not trying to help you. He is trying to do everything he can to bait you into being unforgiving so that you open the door for him, that you be offended, that you get addicted to drugs, addicted to alcohol. I mean, look at look at the fentanyl problem today. I mean, it's unbelievable. Do you think that's from God? No, the enemy wants to absolutely steal your destiny, steal your calling, steal your gifts, steal your marriage, steal your children, steal everything in your life. He wants to kill it, he wants to remove it. Why? Because, you know what? He can't get back at his creator. He can't get to his creator to destroy God. God is greater than him. He can never die. But if he can destroy us, it hurts God when his children fall away. Ask any parent, at least any parent with a, that's sane and not completely distorted by the enemy, it hurts more when your children are hurt and destroyed than it does when you get hurt and destroyed. So the enemy, he wants that. Just like I said, he, you know, in, in Peter, he, the key enemy is a roaring lion. That's what it's compared to. But I want you, but I want to, I want to read this because you, you we got to keep a perspective here. See, 
all of a sudden it's like one of Satan's games is to get you to focus on him. See, if you, can, if you focus on fear, if you focus on isolation, if you focus on the enemy, if you focus on all the things he's trying to destroy, if you focus on fear, anxiety, every, whatever that is that's going on, if he can get you focused on him, what happened? You got your eyes off of God. There's the game. That's, that's the biggest part of the game there is. If I can get you out of the word of God, out of the focus of God, out of your eyes trusting him, out of focusing on what God wants to do in your life, how he wants to have you be an overcomer, how he wants you to use you so that he can change your life so that you can change other people's life as he works through you through the power of the holy spirit through the blood of jesus christ through the name of jesus christ through the love of the father when he can get you off that and put you over here he is basically going to nullify you and take you out of the game it's like he's going to disqualify you as you focus over here on what he wants to do instead of what god wants to do So I want, you, I want you to remember something. Colossians 2, 15. So this is talking about Jesus. It says, well, let me, let me read 14. It's going to be better. It'll make more sense to you. Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us. So that means the law. When Jesus died, he paid for the law and all that the law was going to do. The law... Uh, as Paul wrote in, in Galatians 3, the law was given to us as a tutor, as a teacher, that none of us, none of us, no one has ever succeeded in not breaking the law. We've all failed at the Ten Commandments. We all failed of following the commandments that God gave us. So we need now a savior. It's now a tutor, a teacher to, to make us realize, I can't get to heaven by my own performance. I need a savior, so I need Jesus. It's teaching us, I need a savior, Jesus. He now paid for the hand right of the requirements against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. He was nailed to the cross so that the law was actually nailed to the cross, the requirements of the law. The law is still in effect, it's still good. All the 10 commandments are still good. But the requirement of you having to perform the, the, the requirements of the law to be good enough to get to heaven have now been paid for. And then it says, having disarmed principalities and powers. Okay. Go to Ephesians 6. Go to where it talks about the armor of God right before that. And all of a sudden, I'm like, you don't have time to get into it. I'm going to talk about that in the next program. But there's levels. There's levels. Just like we have an army, there's levels. So all of a sudden, here we are. We've got some levels of what's going on. So there's principalities. That's a level of darkness. And powers, a level of darkness. He, meaning Jesus, made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. So that's, that's listed a few different times. It's like... He made a public spectacle. Public spectacle means he brought them, he completely embarrassed them, bringing through them the streets basically in public to show, look it, they've been overcome, they're defeated, they don't have power, I've taken them out. He basically says other places, they've been, they've been put under my feet. Okay, he paid for it all. So now, let me try to finish up with Revelation. Let me pray. So in, in, in Revelation, the Antichrist comes up, which is a representation, basically. He is the, a man who Satan uses to, to try to destroy the whole earth. Can't get into it. Talk about that before. I'll talk about it again sometime. But it says here, when that army, the army comes in, I'm sorry, Revelation 19, all of a sudden, boom, he's defeated. Now, 
that in Revelation 20, Satan is bound for a thousand years. An angel comes down, binds him up, casts him down into the pit. He is bound for a thousand years. All of a sudden, his reign is not there. And then he's released after a thousand years for a short period of time. Then there's a rebellion. Then Satan is finally judged. And then in Revelation 20, verse 10, you never hear of Satan again. This is it. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. The gavel comes down, final judgment. It's over, it's complete. You'll never hear of Satan ever again. You'll never hear of sin ever again. You'll never hear of the devil. Any demonic presence, anything like that, it's done, it's over, that's it. But it doesn't happen till the end. So let me just pray. Holy Spirit, open their eyes, open their hearts, open their minds. You are the greatest teacher. You're the greatest guide. Teach us. Teach everyone. Guide us. Show us what the Word really says. Show us how we can cast our fears upon Jesus. We can cast our addictions to Jesus. We can ask Jesus to come to set us free. But show them, just like in Romans 12, 1 and 2, we need to choose. We need to choose every one walking this earth needs to make the choice. Do you want to become a living sacrifice? Do you want to surrender your life to Jesus? He paid for it all on the cross. He bought you with the price of his blood. But it's your choice whether you want to surrender. Holy Spirit, you're the only one who can make that transaction. You're the only one who can really open our eyes to fully understand what that means so that we become a living sacrifice. We make the choice that we choose to not be conformed to this world and the ways of this world. But then you can renew our minds. You can transform our thinking. You can bring us through a metamorphosis like, like, a, like a caterpillar going to a butterfly. You can transform us into a new creation in Christ. Help them to understand. Help them to be able to surrender their addictions to you. To say, I'm coming to the end of myself. Here, I need help. I need to be delivered. I need to be delivered from my alcohol, from my whatever it is, the, the drugs, the, the pornography, the sex, the, the whatever, whatever it is that you're going through. Surrender it to Jesus. Surrender it. So, and ask the Holy Spirit, give me the power and the strength to surrender it, to let it go, because Jesus has already paid for it. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father. He's sitting there in that place of ultimate power in heaven, wanting to give us every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. He wants us to see things from an eternal perspective. He wants us to see things from his perspective. We need to bring heaven to earth, as Jesus said in the model prayer. We need to bring heaven to earth, bring the kingdom here. Not to bring earth to heaven, but to bring heaven to earth. To help us to surrender all. Help us to let go. And then set the captives free. Set the captives free. 
Show them how to take their thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ. Help them to understand that they're not fighting against earthly things. They're fighting against spiritual things. And that you don't battle flesh against flesh, but this is against spirit. So help us to understand we can't fight the battle and win against the enemy, but we can. We can't through our own flesh, but we can through your power, through the power of the blood of Jesus, through the power of the name of Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, that we can be overcomers, that we can be then vessels that you can use for your glory, for your purposes, for your kingdom to push forward. Help us to be part of that the last days church. Help us to be part of this great end times revival. Help us to be part of the, the harvesters that are going to bring in that great harvest that's coming. Help us so that as we surrender it all and you transform us and we choose to have your word fill our hearts so that out of our mouth your heart speaks. Because as you transform our heart, it's out of our heart that our mouth will speak, but let it be your words as you transform our heart to be like Jesus. So just spend time with him. Ask him. Ask the Holy Spirit. He will move in you in a way more powerful. And there is no addiction. There is nothing greater than the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is part of God and Satan and all his demons are just created. Never forget the truth because the truth will set you free. The truth of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I just pray all of that in Jesus' name. So have an amazing week. Know the word. And every day, ask the Holy Spirit. Just wake up and say, good morning, Holy Spirit. Guide me today. Move in me today. Show me what I need for today and guide me as the day goes on and enlighten me as to your ways. God bless you and have a great week.